So we have been talking about adaptive immune system. Uh, we said that adaptive immune system is composed of primarily two components, B cells and T cells. First, let's, uh, first of all, let's talk about the B cells. As I have mentioned earlier, the B cells are produced in the bone marrow from precursor cells. B cells also are matured in bone marrow. The reason why these, where these terms come from, uh, T cells and the B cells, it's basically the site at which these cells mature. T cells, after they have been produced by the bone marrow, the, by the cells which reside in the bone, these cells migrate to thymus and this is where the T cells mature. So that's why we call them the T cells. B cells, the term B cell comes from basically bursa fibricious, it's an organ in birds. B cells, when they were first discovered where they mature, it was done, the work was done in the birds. So that is why these cells are called B cells because people found that B cells, these cells mature in bursa fibricious of the birds. In us, we don't have bursa fibricious. The B cells basically mature in bone marrow and then they migrate to the lymphoid organs, for example, lymph nodes. And that is where they're educated. By education, I mean B cells that recognize and try to respond to self antigens. These B cells have to be destroyed because that army of B cells is trained to destroy parts of our own body. So that is where the education takes place. Here's one point I would like to make is maturation of B cells is antigen independent. As we will uh, proceed with this topic, we will see that B cells mature in the absence of antibody. So what is antibody? Let's look at the structure of antibody. Antibody is this Y-shaped molecule which is composed of four polypeptides, two identical heavy chains and two identical light chains. These are the two heavy chains and these are the two light chains. The tail region and the FC region are, is made up of the heavy chains. So here's the FC region. It's called FC region because the terms comes from fragment crystallization. And this is the hinge region. This hinge region also plays a very important role in functioning of antibody because this makes antibody flexible and increases the ability of the antibody to bind antigens. The two binding sites on the antibody are identical. Here's site number one, here is site number two. So flexibility of this hinge allows these two regions, antigen binding regions, but if they're flexible, it gives them ability to cross-link different antigens and form larger structures that can be recognized by, for example, phagocytic cells, which can come and engulf those structures. FC region is basically an, a, also a very important region of the antibody. It is recognized by this FC region of certain antibodies can also be recognized by phagocytic cells since these cells have FC receptors that can bind this FC region of the antibody. So here we have a large photograph of the antigen binding site. Here's the antigen binding site and this antigen binding site has a specific three dimensional shape. Only antigens that can fit in this shape will be able to interact with this antibody or vice versa. The rest of the region of the antibody is the, the framework region which is holding this antigen binding site. We have talked about conformational change. We have said that even small change in the extracellular domain, for example, of a receptor can change, uh, can change the cytoplasmic domain. So framework regions are not only holding this site, but they also contribute towards the, the, the three-dimensional shape of the antigen binding site. The two antigen binding sites, as I've mentioned, are identical and formed by the N-terminus, N-terminal region of light and heavy chain. So these regions, the antigen binding sites are made up of, this is the N-terminus region of these proteins and this 
is where the antigen bind. So here we have the proteins straightened out. You can see here we have the light chain and here we have the heavy chain. The light chain is made up of 110 amino acids and the heavy chain is either made up of 330 amino acids or 440 amino acids. We will see that there are different types of antibodies. It depends what type of antibody we are looking at. Some are made up of 330 amino acids, other are made up of 440 amino acids. So the magic number is basically 110. So it is thought that these larger structures, the, for example, the heavy, heavy uh, chain of the antibody, for example, evolved by gene duplication. Here we can also see these structures. This is the, the light chain and these are the heavy chains and these are repeating units these 110 amino acids that make up the antibody so antibodies bind antigens the the entities that are recognized by antibodies are referred to as antigens antigens that the portions of pieces of antigen that bind antibody are called antigenic determinants here for example we see in colors that these are the antigenic determinants these antigenic determinants could be made up of a single protein or they could be made up of two or more proteins also. Also in certain antigens, the antigenic determinant could be a repeating unit. So the, we can have an antigen which has multiple antigenic, identical antigenic determinants. Such antigens are called polyvalent antigens, which are shown here. And we can have also antigens which are recognized by different or multiple antibodies. So those type of antigens are called multivalent antigens since this antigen for example can bind a, one type of antibody here and a different type of antibody here, a different type of antibody here and a yet a different type of antibody at this region. So affinity is the strength of a single antigenic determinant with a single antibody binding site and it is number independent. The total binding strength of an antigen is called avidity. IgG can bind for example here we have seen a polyvalent antigen. So IgG can bind antigen which is polyvalent 100 times stronger than a monovalent. So it is exponential. The binding strength is exponential if an antigen is polyvalent. So here we can see again an antibody which is we have already seen this. Here's the hinge region which gives the antibody the flexibility. Here you can see in this slide that this antibody because of flexibility of hinge region can bind antigenic determinants. If they're close together this hinge will move allow these two antigen binding sites to move closer and bind this particular antigen which is a polyvalent or also if it allows this antibody to bind to proteins uh, which have antigenic determinants on them for this particular antibody. So because of this flexibility it increases the ability of our antibodies to bind different antigens. So now let's see how antibody can link proteins or antigens and form larger structures. We have seen the single antigenic determinant in the previous slide. If there are two or more antigenic determinants on a single polypeptide or a protein, it can basically result in a formation of larger structures which are easier for phagocytic cells to recognize and engulf. Three or more, we can have much larger, of course, structures. So it eases the immune system. It makes it easier for the immune system to get rid of antigens which have which are polyvalent of course. So next we will see we'll talk about B cell maturation and other functions of B cell.